the the light before you get to the street that the company is on. You turn left, you go in there, you turn right, you go cross railroad track, you go to a guard shack. Oh, speaking of this guard shack, whew, every guard has worked there. Let me change that. Every older white male that worked there smells. Everyone smells. There's only been two white, older white guys. Um, both of them smell. Um, there's been a, there's a younger black guy been there, an older black guy, an older black lady. At one time, there was a lesbian there. I'll tell you about the lesbian in a second. All of them smelled okay, but the two white guys, and right now, I'm so glad about COVID because I wear, you know, you don't have to wear a mask anymore, but I wear a mask when I go into the office because I don't want to smell the guy. And the funny thing is, they during COVID, they had a window that he opened and I had to stand outside, which was cool with me because I had to go inside. Well, now COVID is over. He wants me to come inside with him. And he closed the door. Wants me to close the damn door. So now I'm up in this funky office with him. That's why I wear a mask. I'm, I'm so glad COVID happened because I wear a mask now. When I'm got to go somewhere that smells, me and restrooms, I wear a mask. Some offers I go to, um, the peoples are nice. The, the rooms don't smell anything, but they're small. The offices are small. And there are like two or three people in the office, so I wear a mask because I don't want whatever the hell they got. you know. But anyway, I hope this... I hope this wasn't too boring, but this is what I go through. Oh, I left out the part about the lesbian. There was a black female, uh, one of the smelly white guys was training this black female, and she was sitting up at the office like, I mean, she was looking like this mother, mmm, spank. Well, anyway, I come back um, the next time, and I asked the guy what happened to the, you know, the black female, and he said she was working at night, her girlfriend came up there and she decides she decided to service her girlfriend. And her supervisor called her servicing her girlfriend and they fired her. Okay. When you're driving a track and trailer, you know, you hear a lot of people say truck driver act like they own the road. Well, technically, we don't own the road, but we damn sure pay for it. Okay, at least the company pay for it anyway. So wherever we go, we have to pay taxes on that road. So if I buy fuel in Georgia and I drive to Mississippi or Alabama, or if I drive either one, however much time I spend in Alabama, I have to pay a certain amount of money. How much time I spend in Mississippi, I have to pay a certain amount of money. Even though I bought fuel in Georgia, I have to pay Mississippi so much money, I have to pay Alabama so much money. Whatever state I drive in, I have to pay so much money. Well, again, the company has to pay. But anyway, what I was getting ready to say is this. Bag, the first time I bagged up a track and trailer on a main road was hectic. It was scary, very nerve-wracking. And one time, I'm going to tell you, it was, a, it was a, a particular place in Memphis, Tennessee. It was a paper company. I had to bag into and it was a freaking four lane highway with the medium so we talking about five lanes and i had to back into this company and you know four lane highway is kind of busy especially this was in the city well a truck driver explained to me what to do he said wait until no one you turn into the medium and stop you know pull into the medium make sure the trailer is in the medium and you wait until no one is coming he said, you then, you put on your four ways, you put, well, actually you put on the left signal light, you pull into the wrong side of the road, you put the whole truck and trailer into the, against the curb. Once you get over there, you cut on your four way flashers and you drive straight and you want the trailer to follow behind you. Yes, I'm driving on the wrong side of the road, but I'm at a legitimate company I have to be there. I'm supposed to be there. There's no other way to get that truck and trailer into this driveway but to do what I'm doing, okay? 
Police come by, they ain't going to say nothing to you because, again, you have to do this. You are driving a commercial vehicle, okay? Now, again, you don't pull in front of people. You wait until no one is coming. Now, if people keep coming, well, you just have to wait. There's going to be a break in the road, but just say if there's not a break in the road, sometimes you have to manhandle your way. But again, you don't run over people. You try to find the biggest gap you can get of cars or the biggest pause of cars and you pull on the wrong side of the road. And he told me to pull into the right lane, I mean, pull into the forest lane. When the trail track all the way over, you then drive back across the highway and you, you stop with the cab of your truck in the turning lane or near the turning lane. You're going to block the whole side of the road. You ain't messing with traffic on this side, and you bag into the dock. That's how you bag into this particular dock. But luckily, I don't know what happened. They changed the, the, um, the shipping docks to this company to where now you pull inside the gate and bag up to the dock. It's a lot easier. But that's the way it was when I first started. Now, there's another company I don't go to anymore. It's in... It was in Columbus, Mississippi. This was a two-lane road. Uh, it's kind of a main road. I used to pull up in front, well, pull up almost in front of the company. I'll put on my left signal like I'm going to make a left turn. I'll wait until no one is coming. Then I pull into the, the wrong side of the road. And I as soon as my truck get into the wrong side of the road, I cut on the four-way flashes and I watch the trailer track behind me. On to, I'm on the wrong side of the road. Then I make sure ain't nobody pass me. Sometimes I get an idiot that want to drive past me. Usually people like, what the hell is he doing? Let me sit back here and wait for, let me sit back here and wait. Because this driver is crazy. Well, anyway, once the trailer tracks into the wrong side of the road, I then cut back to the right. Drive across onto the right side of the road, but my I'm, my truck is 45 degree angle blocking the whole damn road. And then I bag into that company. Again, I have to bag to this company. I have a legitimate reason for doing this. There's no other way to get a 53 foot trailer into this company without doing this. Okay. I've been doing this for 10 years. Never seen a cop. One day I see a cop. He didn't say a word to me. Didn't say not one word to me. A pickup truck, um, I don't know, I guess he was in a hurry, drove around me, kind of up onto the grass, and he stopped the pickup truck and said something to him. I guess he told him not to do it again. Never said a word to me. I just thought I'd let y'all know that sometime when you're driving the tractor trailer, you have to take the road. You have to take command of the road. But again, you cannot run people off the road. You can't not run into people. You have to wait until there's a break in traffic before you do that. Dre, y'all have a good day.